What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in my EE Fundamentals series where I basically cover anything that I think is relevant to you becoming a good electrical engineer. So if you've been following along with the past couple videos, you'll notice that I've, we're getting more and more tangible. We're starting to look more and more like actual engineers who like design things as opposed to physicists kind of pour over equations and try to understand the deep mysteries of the universe. So if you recall in the last video, in fact, I actually covered uh, our first actual component, which was the coupled inductor, aka the flyback converter or controller or transformer, flyback transformer. And I kind of explained how this thing works. So now I want to introduce an example of this thing in action. And as you probably can tell already, the example is the flyback converter. In fact, I think that's where the flyback transformer gets its name from. So, like I said, now that we're familiar with how a flyback transformer works, we can actually see how it actually acts in a circuit and how we kind of manipulate and uh, take advantage of its, you know, properties. So, what I have here is a basic flyback converter schematic. So, this is just featuring all of the major components that you need in order to build a flyback converter. So, here we have the DC voltage source. Then we have the flyback transformer aka coupled inductor right here this is a switch oftentimes this will be a mosfet you might hear me refer to it as a fet as well so switch mosfet or fet all the same thing for this then we got an output diode then we have capacitor on the output as well and then this resistor is just going to represent the load so the key operational concept for this flyback converter is that by controlling slash modulating the current through the primary side, we can control the voltage on the secondary side. So I put two little primer bullet points here to hopefully get you to recall why that's the case. So I have like current through the inductor and changing magnetic field. So if those two things don't make you understand why it's the case um, that we can manipulate control the voltage on the secondary side by modulating the current through the primary side and I would say go back and watch the previous videos on uh, the, the last the last two e fundamentals videos I'll link them in the description below and I go over in detail why this is the case so hopefully you can kind of understand this um, this point already so I'm sure you're asking, well, how exactly do we control the current through the primary side? And the answer is with a switch, AKA the MOSFET I just mentioned a few seconds ago. So Q1, the switch is in charge of modulating and or controlling the current through the primary side. So I wanna cover basically the two um, operational cases for the primary side. Um, of the flyback converter. So again, this is the whole uh, schematic here, but we're just gonna focus on the, this one on the left here. Okay, so this little red circuit on the left. So operational case one, which is when the switch is closed. So when the switch is closed, current is able to flow through the inductor in an increasing manner, I say. So this again is covered, the reason this is the case uh, is covered in my previous E Fundamentals videos. Um, <clears throat> But a quick, very brief summary is that whenever you have a voltage drop across an inductor, the current will, over time, ramp up in a linear fashion, okay? So that's just a natural property of inductors. And as a result of this naturally increasing current, the magnetic field generated by the primary winding is also increasing. So that means the primary winding uh, is, is emitting a magnetic field that is growing as a result of increasing current through the inductor, okay? So just know that primary side, switch closed, magnetic field growing. So on state, magnetic field growing. Switch closed, magnetic field growing. Okay, the second case I want to cover is when the switch is open. So now when the switch is open, basically current flow through the circuit comes to like a dead stop, right? So that means the magnetic field being generated by the primary side basically collapses immediately. So the takeaway is the switch open magnetic field shrinking switch open magnetic field collapsing okay so there are there are two cases magnetic field growing magnetic field shrinking okay 
those are the key things you need to realize that that's what's happening from the perspective of the primary side. So the primary side is the one that is creating the magnetic field that is growing and shrinking, okay? So now we'll go from the perspective of the secondary side. And so if you recall, I've, I featured this equation several times in the videos and I kind of talked about the ambiguity of this, um, you know, like negative sign here and how does, what does it even mean for voltage to be negative and stuff? And this is kind of where this comes into play. Is that is because if you're kind of, if you kind of put this together already, is that a growing magnetic field and a shrinking magnetic field, you can kind of ascribe directionality to them in the sense that a growing field and a shrinking field are in opposite directions. So you can think of one as positive and one as negative. And as a result, that induces a positive or negative voltage in the output. So in one of the cases, the magnetic field, will, the voltage will be positive. In one of the cases, the magnetic field or the voltage on the secondary side will be negative, okay? So um, I'll, I'll explain in which case is which, but just understand that, in, in fact, you can design flybacks that have either or, but just know that it's gonna be opposite each way. So I hope, I hope this makes sense. So just for the sake of an example, we're gonna say, in, and I want to focus more on current flow. I think that's a better way to explain what's going on than the actual voltage being positive or negative here. So here I have just taken the same circuit and I've drawn some little explanatory arrows here that represent the current flow. So we'll look at here in the on state, we have a growing magnetic field and we have a clockwise current flow through the primary side. So I hope that's pretty obvious. It's pretty simple to understand that. And then in the off state, we have a shrinking magnetic field, and then there's no current through the primary side at all because the switch is open. So as a result, in this example that I've given, whenever current is flowing through clockwise through the primary side, um, we have current flowing counterclockwise through the secondary side, okay? And I should at this point say attempting to flow because, because of our good old output diode here, no current is actually flowing in the case, but if this diode wasn't here, current would be flowing counterclockwise here, okay? So that's kind of what I want, to un want you to understand is that switch is closed, we're trying to, we're trying to spin, we're trying to run current through at a, in a certain direction, and when switch is open, we're trying to run current in another direction, okay? This is because we have a growing, magne growing magnetic field in one case and a shrinking magnetic field in another case. So here in this example, in the case of the off state or when the switch is open, I'm saying that the current on the output is flowing clockwise. In this case, we are allowing the current to actually flow because the, the diode is, is forward biased, so it's, it's allowing current to flow there. Um, the reason why we're using this output diode, if it's not obvious, is because a lot of electronic circuits don't like it when current is run backwards through them, okay? They, that causes a lot of them to break. So that's the whole point of this diode on the output. But if it wasn't there, we would have cases where the current on the output was, was flowing counterclockwise and clockwise, okay? So I hope that kind of makes sense. So if we're going back to really, really simple terms, um, switch is closed, growing magnetic field in the primary, counterclockwise current in the secondary. Switch is open, shrinking magnetic field in the primary, clockwise current flow in the secondary okay so i hope that's kind of the key behavioral concept right that's like the whole shebang right there like if you understand that then you're basically good to go um kind of i mentioned in real life we don't want our output voltage alternating aka we don't want the direction of our output current alternating either so we that's why we use the diode in the output so now i'm sure you're wondering did i just randomly make these up like what like how did i know that this this clockwise flow in this direction resulted in counterclockwise in this direction and vice versa. And the reason for that is the dots on the transformer. That's what these denote. So there are some physical explanations to the actual construction of the transformer, which results in these dots being placed where they are. Um, and the very brief explanation is just the directionality of the winding. So you can wind, you can take the, say you have the core, you can wind the circ the wire around the circuit you know, this way, or you can wind it, you know, this way. And I'll say clockwise, so this is, this is clockwise to you, and then counterclockwise, okay? 
So you can do that, and that's kind of re- what results in these. What they refer, you'll hear if you look about the tutorials, you hear like the polarity is you know out of phase or something, something. So all you got to know from a design perspective is when the dots are opposite of each other, then current flow will be opposite, right? So dots are opposite, current flow is opposite. We have clockwise current flow, counterclockwise, they're in opposite directions, okay? And that's because the dots are on opposite sides of each other. So that's the very thing, that's that's all you got to know when you're designing circuits for this. Um, that just tells you your direction of your output diode. So um, if in here I'll give like another analogy for how these things work. If you look up other tutorials, you hear the analogy made for a bucket of water. So uh, basically what they'll say, the switch is closed, the bucket is filling up, the primary side is storing energy in the core. And then when the switch is open, the bucket is emptying. So it's just distributing its energy out to wherever the hell the bucket's dumping water onto. So this is a pretty good, simple analogy to understand. I want to add a note of my own here that this analogy is for how the flyback converter should operate. Um, that is if you design it properly because an incorrect resi- design could result in the bucket emptying when the switch is closed, which is very dangerous. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And quickly, if it doesn't make sense, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying here is that say you messed up this design and say this diode was flipped where it was, it was facing the other way. So when the switch was closed, it allowed the counter, there was nothing prohibiting this current from flowing counterclockwise through here. So that is a way you could incorrectly design the circuit. And going back to that bucket analogy, in the on state, the bucket would still be considered filling up with water, but then it's also emptying itself because it's distributing the energy. It's being allowed to distribute its energy across to the secondary side. And the reason this is dangerous is because it's like undermines a key principle of the flyback converter key feature which is that it's this this power supply is like one of the safest topologies you can design and what i mean by that is let's say something goes wrong in our circuit and a component fails let's say the switch fails and it gets stuck in the closed position let's say if you're in that incorrect circuit design where this diode was facing backwards you would essentially in 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 uh, theory you would have infinite amount of power being distributed across to the to the secondary side right because the current through the primary would just keep ramping up to infinity magnetic field would always keep growing so you would just have an insanely high amount of uh current being distributed to the secondary and that could be very dangerous because say you're trying to plug in your iphone to charge and you just you're going to get electrocuted and nobody wants that okay nobody wants that life so that's kind of what i talked about is is this is a key uh, analogy for how it, it should operate and, and yeah you'll you'll hear people in the tutorials hear them mention incorrect design could result in the bucket emptying with the switch is closed and that's one thing you want to avoid and i will add so go back to assume this is correctly designed like this the reason it makes it so safe and let's say again we'll say the switch fails and it's stuck it's stuck in the closed position what happens nothing happens i mean the the what happens is your primary side will just just get wrecked right this inductor in real life this inductor will burn up i mean your switch has already failed um your breaker might trip if this is plugged into it this is your ac dc converters a lot of times what they're using so your breaker might trip because current will just ramp up through this inductor indefinitely but what doesn't happen is you don't get electrocuted okay and that's a much better outcome than saving a two dollar converter okay because these are very cheap to make that's kind of the key concept I want to illustrate is that when these are properly designed, they require a switching mechanism, okay, to actually function. So a way that this could go wrong, like like say you, you design the circuit properly, the only way in order to get enough like voltage on the output to harm somebody is by somehow messing up with the switching frequency. And when we're talking about component failure, that's it's it's way 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 more rare rarer for somehow your your thing that's controlling the switch and that's case called flyback control we'll get into that later but it's it's way rarer for the switching frequency to somehow go out of whack and go insane to where you're distributing way too much power 
to the output side versus a simple switch failing. And then that's causing the distribution, right? So it's just think about the amount of steps that have to take place for the switching frequency to get out of whack. That's just like very, very complicated and not always will it result in, in dangerous situations, but the, a failure of a switch, you know, that happens a lot more often. So um, that pretty much concludes all of the, the major like behavioral analysis or explanation of how this flyback converter actually works. So um, yeah, we didn't get any nitty gritty equations yet. We'll get in some next time for whenever it comes to actually designing your flyback converter. So, but yeah, so I hope this made perfect sense to you. If you have any questions related to this stuff, drop a comment down below and I'll definitely make follow-up videos. I'll make follow-up videos all day for you guys, okay? So just let me know and I will answer it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much wraps up everything I want to cover. So uh, yeah, thanks.